All right. So the question asks, uh, what is the self-inductance of an LC circuit that oscillates at 60 hertz when the capacitance is dead? So by LC circuit, they are talking about something that looks like this. Um, capacitor hooked up in series or parallel. The circuit has only two of them, so they could be both simultaneously be in series and in parallel. Because whatever current goes through capacitor must go through the inductor. And at their end point, they have the same voltages. So <laughs> you have this circuit. And you have to imagine that you are starting out with some uh, amount of charge, like uh, a charge of, uh, amount of um, some additional energy in the system. Uh, the easiest way to describe it would be as a charge on the capacitor. That's what I've written. But another way you could do it is through as a current through the inductor. That works too. So when you have a setup, a circuit set up like this, what you know will happen is that this current will start to flow because uh, there's a voltage being imposed across the uh, across the inductor that's given by the voltage across the capacitor, which is given through its uh, uh, definition of capacitance. I think that's right. Uh, so because of this voltage difference, um, there's the property of inductor, which says that voltage difference across inductor is the inductance times the time derivative of the current. So there's going to be non-zero time derivative of the current which means current starting from zero will start the flow. In, there will be increase in current. And um, as that flows, this capacitor is discharging. At some point in time in the future, the capacitor has discharged, discharged all the way to zero. At that moment in time, there will still be current flowing through the inductor. And that can't stop immediately because that stopping immediately would mean through this relationship, the voltage across the inductor being infinite. That can happen. And whatever the voltage across the inductor is, that is also going to be the voltage across the capacitor. So as the current through the inductor starts to decrease, that induces the voltage across it. That would uh, uh, lead to storing of the charges on the capacitor. And so this is a whole cycle that oscillates forever. In that setup, um, so there's a couple different ways you can approach this question. I will tell you the easiest thing to do is to have this memorized. Natural oscillation frequency of an LC circuit is one square root of one over LC. <laughs> so if you have that memorized, the great, you can solve for L. Uh, that's gonna be uh, one of omega squared times c. Um, and remember, omega is equal to 2 pi times frequency. That's what the number you are given. So you can do that calculation. I'm just going to plug in all the numbers in basic SI units. Uh, so decimal approximation of 1 over 2 pi times the frequency, 60 hertz squared, still dividing by 10.5 micro uh, Farad. Okay. Uh, wait, that's the, yeah, that is L. So you can do that. You will get an answer 0 0.670 uh, Henry. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> and that might actually even be the recommended way to do it. Now, suppose you don't, you didn't have them memorized and uh, you somehow, I don't know, either didn't want to or didn't have access to your book. So you couldn't look it up then how would you approach this question? Uh, you start with, uh, with a Kirchhoff rule. So you imagine, um, because Kirchhoff's rules is really the generic problem solving method for any circuit problem. So if you don't already have a memorized solution at, on hand, then the starting from scratch is Kirchhoff's rule. So I, I think here I only need to use the loop rule. So I'm gonna start here go across this capacitor. So let me start writing down my voltage changes. Voltage change across the capacitor is the amount of charge on it as a potentially function of time over C. And then as I go across the inductor, okay, here uh, I have to, so it's potentially plus or minus this quantity, L, D, I, D, T. 
And uh, I like to go through this reasoning process whenever I decide on a sign like this. So think of the initial state, zero current, I have some charge, current is starting to flow. So my this, uh, so I will, I should be having positive current flowing in this direction. And I think I want to define my variable i in such a way that my di dt is positive at that time as well. Okay, so with that combination in mind, what do I need to do? Because I have an intuitive sense that voltage here is lower than the voltage here, so that I can come back to zero. So I need the voltage change here to be negative. So thinking of my sign of di dt, so I would want minus a sign here so that this entire combination will be subtracting. Yeah. So once you have argued that through and convinced yourself that minus sign is the correct sign, then you have that. I'm back to my original point. So I should say, oh, so all of that is equal to zero. And when you look at this, it won't um, be quite what you want because it's a function of two variables. Um, I really want differential equation of only one variable. So here, what you have to remember is the expression for current through the capacitor. Current through the capacitor is given by the time derivative of the capacitors. Oh, sorry, amount of charge on the capacitor. And here, I want to think through it as well. So, um, so I have current through the capacitor as potentially plus or minus dq dt. Uh, and this sign is, again, something I want to think through. Think of the initial time. You have Q0 that's decreasing, and I want this current I to be positive at that moment in time. That means my dQ dt is negative, so I need to choose a minus sign here so that, um, so that my overall sign of the current will be positive. I, I will tell you, there's no hard and fast rule that says it's positive in these circumstances, it's negative. That's all too complicated. I think it's easier for me for you to go through this reasoning process each time, uh, just for a particular snapshot in mind. So I can use this. Current through the capacitor is the current through the whole circuit. So I can just use that as my current. I can plug that in here. Doing that gets me. Uh, Q as a function of time over C, minus cancels minus, plus L. Uh, I have second order time derivative equal to zero. And uh, hopefully this is now beginning to look familiar. Let me solve this for uh, the highest order derivative. When you do that, you get this. And this might be something you recognize from your uh, physics 4A when you got to oscillations, uh, equation of motion of, for example, simple harmonic oscillator, if uh, uh, Q of T is your coordinate variable or whatever. So uh, this is a simple harmonic oscillator equation. And if you recall back to that, then the solutions to that had is so that the quantity that's here should be omega squared. And that's really where this formula comes from. So if you didn't have it memorized, hey, you can drive it on the spot. It doesn't take that long. <laughs> so, okay, let me go to the next question. So it says, in an oscillating RLC circuit, I think they mean series RLC circuit, because that's really the only thing your textbook ever deals with. So I'm just going to have series RLC circuit. It asks, uh, you have, so they are giving you the value of resistance, value of inductance, and value of capacitance, and asking, what is the angular frequency of the oscillations? Uh, uh, let me point out a trap you could have possibly uh, fall into. So you might think, oh, I remember my previous question. So my natural frequency of oscillation was one over square root of LC. I have LC. Let's... Uh, uh, plug in those numbers, uh, so loop Merkle approximation of 1 over square root of L, 2 times 10 to the power of minus 3, for me and me, Henry, times C, 87 times 10 to the minus 6, microfarad. Okay, I get an answer, and since that's omega, that should already be in radians per second. 
So 2397. And if I had to take a bet, there's a good chance this will be graded as incorrect. <laughs> and uh, it's not because I made any mistake in these steps, or rather the mistake that's made is in using this formula. This is a bit of a, almost a, like a physics trivia thing. Um, when you have a register, this instead of being a simply simple harmonic oscillator, this is more like a damped simple harmonic oscillator. This uh, resistance provides damping. And this is the, I guess, um, <laughs> kind of physics trivia thing. In a damped simple, simple harmonic oscillator, the damping actually introduces a, a slight bit of a frequency shift. <laughs> so if uh, this register had been big, like a kilo ohm, the damping might have shifted the frequency ever so small that this sensor would have been graded as correct. But with something small like, uh, uh, or actually in this circuit, you would need a smaller resistor. So like something small, like a 0 0.1 ohm, you might have gotten shift so small that uh, this would be correct still. But with something like a 10 ohm, it might be at a level of damping where your angular frequency has shifted quite a bit. So um, what do I recommend here? I think for this question, I would say, look up your textbook. Because <laughs> uh, this is the kind of the point where redriving the expressions, it gets so tedious. Basically, the only way to solve it with the level of math we have is to plug in an exponential function as a guess. And, and <laughs> I don't recommend any of that. Look up your textbook. Your textbook covers exactly um, RLC series of circuit with an AC that will give you the damping. And they actually have a formula all written out for you. Uh, the formula that they've derived. And wait, that's not right. Uh, wrong chapter. Uh, or else the series of circuits, the 14.6. So the distinction is whether you have a driven circuit or you have a self-oscillating circuit. Here, we're going to be dealing with a self-oscillating circuit out of chapter 14, um, which was the chapter your last week was on. So this is the your uh, equation of motion that you would come up with. And, um, and this is um, yeah equation of motion, and you solve it then you get a solution, and here, this is the answer that you should look up and use. So the part that I use, one over square root of LC, that is already there. So, um, so I can still continue to use it. The only thing I have to be careful is I have these other quantities under the square root. So I think what I should do is, let me just pull out the square root so that uh, I'm not having to deal with other stuff, okay. So what I need is that the, there's other term here that I somehow didn't know about before. Now I know, so let me plug it in. So minus R, 9.5 ohm, divided by two times the inductance, two times 10 to the power of minus three for Minli and Henry, okay. Uh, the whole thing squared, okay. I think that's closer square root, closer n. okay. So you see how much this changed. Uh, so that's why my pre previous answer wasn't accepted as correct. This will now be accepted as correct. And you can see how when the, your resistance is much smaller, like 0 0.1, that this is a, such a small number that it doesn't affect your answer. But as this gets uh, larger and larger, um, the, your frequency shifts a lot and a lot. And at certain point, uh, your circuit, um, yeah, it becomes imaginary. Your circuit shifts from being uh, damped, I guess, under damped, simple harmonic oscillator to critically damped and then over damped. When it's over damped, it doesn't oscillate at all. Well, when it's critically damped, it doesn't oscillate at all either. Um, so, so yeah, this, that's that question. You kind of just look up the formula and use it. <laughs> that's what I would recommend, seriously. Because uh, it, uh, um, it's great to be able to uh, derive expressions from scratch, but I gotta tell you, for some questions, it's just not worth the time. <laughs> um, it's good for you to know how to do it, uh, if you ever had to, take 20 minutes, but 
you know, it, spending 20 minutes every single time it comes up, not worth the time. 